name, amen. 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 The book of Mark, and y'all suffer me this, this morning. This is another, this is another little lengthier than, than I normally preach, but I got to get this word out. So you know what? We just don't let the Holy Spirit have its way, so y'all suffer me, okay? Amen. But the book of Mark is one of four gospels that tell the story of Jesus, the book about his earthly ministry, his death, burial, and resurrection. And Matthew was written to the Jews. Mark was written to the Romans, Luke to the Greeks, and John to the church in general. And the story I read to you today is also mentioned in the book of Mark and the book of Matthew, as we just read. But Matthew offers a little more detail than Mark. Mm -hmm. So that's why I reference Matthew as well. But the book of Mark informs us and reminds us of the power of Jesus Christ. That he has the power to heal, mm -hmm. to deliver, uh -huh. and to set free. Come Amen. on somebody. Yeah. So tell your neighbor, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm delivered. And I've been set free. And I've been set free. In Mark, the first miracle Jesus performed was in the synagogue. And just so we can relate this morning, let me say it this way. The first miracle John mentions that Jesus performed happened in the church. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. And because of the location of this healing, most people who may not know about this story or may be hearing this for the first time would immediately picture someone who had some type of infirmity. Somebody who was deaf or, or, or paralyzed or, or lame or, or mute. But there was a man uh -huh. sitting in the church who was possessed with a demon. Uh -huh. Y'all better talk to me. I, I might need to say that one more time. There was a man sitting in the church who was possessed with a demon. Let me say something to you this morning. The building we have church in uh -huh. is not the church. Amen. 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 Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. The building we have church in is not the church. We are the church. Amen. We Amen. bring the church to the building. Uh -huh. Therefore, everybody who walks in the building uh -huh. ain't of the church. All right. Come on. We got a lot of demons walking in the church toting their Bibles sitting right beside us saying hallelujah and amen. Y'all better talk to me this morning. Anyway, the demon inside the man said, why are you interfering with us, Jesus? In so many words, why are you here? Ah, Y'all better hear me this morning. We having service just fine, Jesus. We got our program outlined. We know what we want done in service today. We got the, the order in which everything is supposed to be done. We have the money just fine. So why you here, Jesus? Uh -huh. Come on. Say what, Jesus? You want to change the service today? Come on now. <laughs> you want to skip announcements and skip all the preliminary stuff and just worship? Amen. But we've already done it this way, Jesus. We've done it this way for years, so why are you interfering with us? Why are you interfering with how we do things? Ever since I can remember, my daddy, my granddaddy, and my great-granddaddy did it this way. We've always done it this way, Jesus. Oh, no, Jesus, we can't do that. Why are you interfering? Why are you even here? Have you come to destroy us? The demon and the man said, I know who you are. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I know who you are. Mm. If you have a dichotomy, let me back that up. <laughs> if you have a division uh -huh. Uh -huh. going on in your church all the time, come on, come on. Mm -hmm. folk fighting vision, all right. mm. folk irritated with how long worship is, mm -hmm. folk always fighting against authority and out of order and questioning and quenching the move of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus turns towards the man and speaks to the spirit. Y'all better hear me on that. Not to the man, mm -mm, right. but to the spirit yeah. right. that is operating in the man. Uh -huh. See, our war is not with what? Flesh and blood. That's 
right, y'all. Our war is not with flesh and blood. It is not with each other. And Jesus said, be quiet. Uh, and come out of him. Jesus. Right there in the middle of church. Come on. And the Bible says the spirit screamed. But before he left, the man, he sent him into convulsions. Uh -huh. Then he left. Yes. Let me talk to a pastor who might be listening to me this afternoon or this morning. Mm. You know what? He left. He left, but he caused a scene. Lord Jesus, Lord oh, Jesus, Lord Jesus. I'm going to say it one more time. He left, oh, but he caused a scene oh, yes, before he left. Yes, and I believe that's why some pastors, Lord Jesus, come on now. and leadership won't approach people who are creating havoc in the building where they have church because deep down they are afraid and don't feel like dealing with the scene uh -huh. that it's going to cause. Uh -huh. Y'all better talk, talk to, to me today. Y'all better talk, talk to me today. Y'all to 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 better talk to me today. Anyway, I don't want to stay there too long. Jesus heals a, a lot of people. Yes, he he preaches a little, then he heals. He heals a man with leprosy, a paralyzed man, and, and so many more. He's healing, preaching, and recruiting folk to be his disciple. He teaches about the Sabbath and about fasting. Then he heals someone on the Sabbath. So you better believe the word is getting around town. Amen. The word is getting around town about this Jesus and how he's healing folk. Mm -hmm. Jesus can't find anywhere to rest. He can't find anywhere to steal away and be alone. Uh -huh. He can't get away from the crowds because everywhere he goes, people are following him. Yeah. So Jesus leaves town in order to find rest. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is just a reminder, RACC, that as a leader, sometimes you have to leave town. Uh -huh. yeah. You have to leave town to try and get some much-needed rest or some much-needed time or break away from folk and ministry. Amen. You got to. That's why verse 24 says, Jesus left Galilee. And scripture says, he didn't want anyone to know uh -huh. which house he was staying in. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's something now. Have, have y'all ever heard that before? That Jesus was, he was on purpose high. <laughs> just to get a break Amen. but he couldn't keep it a secret uh -huh. yes. when Jesus is truly in the house no matter how much you try to keep it a secret you can't because when Jesus is in the room uh -huh. things happen Amen. and people want to be a part of what's happening yes. so anyway Jesus is in this house trying not to be discovered by anyone and there's a knock on the door. Mm -hmm. And in comes a woman who falls at Jesus' feet and says, I've heard about you. My little girl is possessed by an evil spirit and I'm begging you, Jesus. I heard about what you did for that man in the synagogue so I know you can save my little girl. I'm begging you to cast the demon out of her. Would you agree? When your child is hurting, uh -huh. you hurt. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And there's almost nothing you won't do to protect or save your child. And to see your child go through that kind of turmoil and not be able to do anything about it. And then you find out there's a man mm -hmm. in town Come on. Come on now. who can help her. The man everyone is talking about. Mm -hmm. The man who has helped people who have been in similar situations and all you can think about is getting to him. Mm -hmm. yes. Come hell or high water. Uh -huh. You know, if you can just get to Jesus, he'll be able to fix your problem. Yes. Just like the woman with the issue of blood who pressed her way through the crowd and touched the hem of his garment and virtue left him and healed her body. Just like the man who was paralyzed, whose four friends dug a hole through the roof of the house where Jesus was preaching and lowered him down in front of Jesus so he could receive his healing. Come on, somebody. Oh, yeah. Just like the man who had leprosy, who knelt in front of Jesus begging to be healed. Uh -huh. 
Yes. And he said, Jesus, if you're willing, yes. heal me yes. and make me clean. And Jesus reached out, touched him, and said, I am willing. Amen. Be healed. Amen. Anyway, she presses her way in, and she's begging Jesus for help. And I can imagine as a mom who has seen her daughter go through day after day, she wasn't begging quietly. Can I get an amen, moms? Amen. She was probably begging loudly. Mm -hmm. And scripture makes mention that she's a Gentile, uh -huh. which means she's not Jewish. And as she's begging and pleading with Jesus, Jesus doesn't reply. Mm -hmm. my, my. Can we drop all the facade today and be real? Amen. amen. Can, can we be real, y'all? Oh, yeah, man. How does it make you feel when you're begging Jesus for something that's important to you, mm. but he doesn't reply? It's like he's showing up for everybody else but for you and your situation and, and, and you're praying, but he's quiet. Mm -hmm. Y'all better talk to me today. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Y'all better talk to me today. This woman is begging Jesus for help. Not begging for herself, but for her little girl. Mm -hmm. And the disciples <laughs> took Jesus' silence as a sign. That he didn't want to be bothered by this mother. Mm -hmm. So they said, Jesus, send her away. Mm -hmm. Get rid of her. Because she's bothering us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. My, my, my. Wow. I need to just stop right here. <laughs> Not bothering Jesus. That's right, bothering <laughs> us. <laughs> but bothering us. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's why some folk don't come to the church, y'all. Mm -hmm. Lord here. Jesus, I gotta wow. stop here. I wow. gotta stop come here. On. Wow. Because we, the followers of Jesus, yes. make them feel yeah. like their presence is bothering Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on here. One more time. When actually their presence is bothering us. Amen. Mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. wow. In the church, hearing the word. Receiving the love of God from his people is where they need to be. Yes. 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 Sometimes after we've been saved for a while, we forget where we came from. Come on. Mm -hmm. Yes. My God. Remember last week, y'all. Oh, I got to stop. Remember last week when I preached from Romans and I told you what Paul said to the Roman church explaining how man's rejection of God is behind what we see in our world today. Uh -huh. And I ask you to read the rest of Romans chapter 1 uh -huh. so that you can see the list of things that have manifested as a result of man's rejection. Uh -huh. Well, I hope you read it. Yes. Because if you did, you saw a list of all the things people are still struggling with today. Amen. Yes. But if you kept on reading and went to the second chapter, uh -huh. you would have also discovered that Paul began to chastise the church. Yeah. He said, I'm going to quote what he said, you may think you can condemn such people, but you are just as bad and you have no excuse. Amen. Amen. When you say they are wicked, and should be punished, you are condemning yourself for you who judge others do these very same things. Yeah. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. I, got, I, got, I, got, I got to stop right here, y'all, seriously. See, I, I wish I had time today to really dissect that scripture. But that's why we feel uncomfortable. Can I, can I stop yes. it for a minute? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why we feel uncomfortable. That's why it gets on our nerves. Mm -hmm. That's why we can't show them love or welcome them openly in some churches because it's a reminder that we're still struggling ourselves in some area of our lives. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. And see, when 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 we come to church, oh Jesus, y'all gotta. We don't want to be reminded of that. Amen. Oh, come on. We've been made to think that church is a place, a place where we're supposed to be able to dress up. Y'all better stay with us, right? Dress up and cover up. Put a smile on, even though you know you've been crying all night long. 
Yeah. Put makeup on to cover up a black eye that you're trying to hide. Yeah. We've been made to think that when I'm around Jesus and his people, I can't act like what I dealt with last night. Y'all better talk to me today. I got to act like it didn't happen. I got to pretend I've arrived. I got to quote scripture and wear my title. I got to pretend I've arrived, even if it's only for one hour. God, I thank you. So I, I can't have you come up in here and remind me of my issues. It makes me uncomfortable when you come up in here with your issues out in the open. God, I thank you. Jesus. So yes, her begging was bothering them. Her begging was bothering them. Her pleading was bothering them. Her crying out was bothering them. It was bothering the disciples. Not Jesus. Tell your neighbor it was bothering the disciples. It was bothering, bothering the disciples. disciples. But she wasn't talking to the disciples. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she was talking to Jesus. That's right. Mm -hmm. Scripture doesn't say she said this, but moms, you know how we are about our children. But as a mom who was there trying to save her child, yes. I can imagine she might not have said it, but she thought it. Excuse me? Right. I'm talking to Jesus. Amen. 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 My praise and worship might bother you on Sunday morning, on but now. excuse me? Come on, Come on, I'm talking to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. I ain't talking to you. You don't know my story. Come on now. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I'm going through in my body right now. You don't know what I'm doing in my life right now. You don't know the tears that I shed. Excuse me? Come on now. Yes. I'm talking to Jesus. My God, my crying and, and my shouting and my pleading might be getting on your nerves. Hey, but don't you know that my fears uh -huh. that I deal with yeah. push me every Sunday. Uh -huh. So excuse me. Uh -huh. I ain't talking to you. Yeah. Excuse me. This is a one-way conversation. Uh -huh. I'm talking to Jesus. Yes. Yes. I'm not seeking your face because you can't heal me. Come on, come on, come on. Now. All right. I'm not seeking your face uh -huh. because you can't do for me what my Lord and Savior can do for me. Yeah. Yeah. So excuse me. Uh -huh. I'm talking to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you just happen to be in the room. Come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> So Jesus breaks his silence mm -hmm. and says, first, I should feed the children, uh -huh. All right. my own family, uh -huh. the Jews. Right. Sidebar, here's a scripture harvest that supports what Pastor D and I have always taught y'all. Mm -hmm. You always take care of home first. Amen. Amen. What you look like a leader in the church and your home raggedy. Right. What you look like a leader in the church and your home and your marriage jacked up, but you out counseling somebody else's marriage. All right now. All right now. All right now. You got to take care of home first. You out here passing out food to people that need food, and you ain't got no food at home yourself, and your pride is too strong and too deep to say, I need help. That's right. That's right. That's right. Take care of your own house first. Amen. That's why we bring food in here. We let y'all know if you need food, get it. Amen. Don't be prideful. Pride good before destruction and a holy spirit before a fall. If you need it, get it. Amen. And then we will take what's left out to those Amen. who need it. Amen. Excuse me, y'all. <laughs> I'm talking to Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Talking to Jesus. But Jesus breaks his silence. And that's what Jesus just told 
I have to take care of my own. Mm -hmm. I got to take care of my own first, and that's the Jews. Yeah. Mark doesn't mention this, but Matthew does. Matthew says, but she kept right on pleading. Mm -hmm. yes. Good Come gracious of life. Come on. Hey, stop. She kept right on pleading and begging with Jesus, and she worshipped. She worshipped him. She didn't care who was looking. Amen. She was worshipping and begging. Worshipping and begging. Worshipping and crying out to Jesus. And Jesus said, it's not right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. Let me back up. Jesus ain't calling her name, y'all. That's right. <laughs> Back then, the term dogs was used when referring to Gentiles. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then she says, that's true, Lord. But even dogs are allowed to eat the scraps yeah. that fall beneath the master's table. Amen. Oh, oh. Good gracious of mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. This sister was on point. Amen. The image of children and the dogs, though, is symbolic of Christianity. Yes. Uh -huh. God sent the bread of life, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, to the Jews first. Mm -hmm. He wanted to feed them first, Amen. but they rejected him mm -hmm. and crucified him on the cross. But because of their rejection, the gospel was sent to the Gentiles. Come on. We got the crumbs. Amen. Come on. No. Amen. <laughs> Take an evil. I thank God for them crumbs. I thank God for them crumbs. I thank God for them crumbs. Thank God. Thank Jesus. That's right. Woo, thank you, thank Jesus. Jesus for the crumbs. Lord, I'll set up for the crumbs because I know even your crumbs will feel me, God. Come on now. Come on now. I know your crumbs will do the job. I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm not worthy. I'm not asking for the whole loaf, Lord. I ain't even asking for a slice. Gentile made them have to look at themselves. Yes. 
And that's why they said she's bothering us. Get rid of her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Expose us. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you've got somebody that's walking up in the church and it makes you feel uncomfortable, instead of going up checking them, check yourself. Amen. 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 Because if it makes you feel uncomfortable that their presence is even in the sanctuary, mm -hmm. that's got to do with you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. My, my, my. We spend more time looking at how folk dress when they come in the church. Mm -hmm. Looking to see if they skirt too short so we can have something to go up to them after church to talk about. Looking to see what they're doing in church that might be going against what you think and you go up to them instead of focusing on the soul. Those kind of people need to be in the church. Amen. For that matter, we definitely need to stay in the church. Amen. Because just because you have Jesus Christ in your heart doesn't mean everything is already cleaned up. Because y'all know that whenever you give your life to Christ, you still got some junk in your yes. heart. Yes. That's right. That's you still got some stuff you still dealing with. That's right. That's right. You ain't arrived. Amen. Just because you can quote scripture from Genesis to Revelation Amen. don't mean on, nothing. If you ain't applying it. Thank you, Lord. So you got to apply the word of God and allow the God's word to change you. Be ye transformed by the renewal of your what? Mind. That's right. Amen. Amen. My God. Thank you, Lord. Excuse me. Mm. I'm talking to Jesus. Amen. Amen. I ain't talking to you. That's right. I'm talking to Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on and give God a hand. Yeah. 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 right now for your word and we ask you Lord to help us be more than hearers but doers of your word and I thank you Lord for using this clump of clay to, to say what it is you wanted to say to us not to them but to us because Lord it was a word for all of us me included and so God I thank you I worship you and we honor you and we magnify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you're in here today and you believe in God, yes. you, you've been standing on his word and you've been saying to God, Lord, I, just give me the crumbs. Just, just, just give me the crumbs, Lord. I, I got some issues going on. I, I got something going on in my body. I, I got something going on in my mind. I, I got something going on in my marriage. I, I got something going on in my finances. And God, I know you can change things. I, I know that you're able, God, because I've read it in your word and, and I've experienced you and I, I've seen you do it in other areas of my life. So God, I, 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 I just want the crumbs. Mm. Thank you, Lord. I just need you to come up here and touch and agree with me. Because I'm one of those this morning. I, I need the crumbs. I need the crumbs. I need for God to show up in a way that only he can. In a way that only he knows about. And I thank God he knows me. I thank God he knows you better than you know and we know ourselves so whatever that thing is if you want to call that in your head or whisper it on your lips I ask you right now to do that just whisper it on your lips from your lips to God's ears because he knows he knows and I'm going to ask you to pray for the person beside you you don't have to know what they whisper just pray them. Oh God, we thank you. Lord, we give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. We surrender. We come before your altar right now knowing that you exist. Knowing God that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above what we even say or whisper off the tip of our and so, God, we thank you that you're already on the job. You, you're already working it out. And, God, we're not asking for the whole loaf because we know, God, what you
what you can do. We know that you're powerful. And we know one word from you, God, can change the entire situation. And so, God, I'm asking you right now, Lord, to send your word. Send your word into that body that needs healing. Send your word so that manifestation can take place. We know that by your stripes we're already healed. But, God, I thank you for the manifestation. So, God, send your word. Help us to speak your word and let your word be the only thing that comes off of our tongues, Lord. Help us not cancel it out with our own doubt and our own mouths. And God, I praise you today. I worship you today that every need that's at this altar right now, every vessel that has come forth, they walked God a walk of faith because they believe that you can. They believe that you will. And so, God, I thank you, Lord, that you do it right now in Jesus' name. And we will give you the praise and all the honor and all the glory because you alone deserve it. So, Lord, we thank you in advance. As tears stream down our eyes, God, turn those into tears of joy. We may have come to the altar with tears of sadness, but God, now they're tears of joy because we trust you and lean not to our own understanding. But in all our ways, we acknowledge you and you promise you will direct us. And so God, we thank you. We honor you and we magnify your name. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Give him the highest praise, y'all. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.